It's time to get sad. Let's talk about the best in doom metal subgenres. Welcome to Metal Forge Reviews, where you can get the most out of your metal releases. This list we're calling Despair and Loss, which is focusing on doom subgenres that nail these emotions, specifically funeral, melodic, death, gothic, and the blackened doom subgenres. Some of the best music out there isn't technical. One of the things we love about doom is the ability to capture the essence of melancholy and introspection. These albums do exactly that. They let you get lost in your thoughts, have a good think and come out the other side a stronger person. That's right. Let us know in the comments what your favorite doom metal albums are in these subgenres. Let's get into the sadness. Funeral Doom is first on the list here. This was one of the genres where I wasn't exactly sure what to put down in this section. Thankfully, I heard this album just the other day and it completely changed how I look at Funeral Doom. NGR by Tunisian-based Amination. Yes, there will be only one pick from this year and I had to put it on here. It's a game changer. The whole record feels like you're attending a homily that is being sermonized by a trio of monks that are bearing the truth of an impending apocalypse upon your people. It's basically your pre-funeral, the funeral that happens while you're still alive. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. This album, though, is beyond engaging. It's captivating, and I have a very hard time saying that about basically any other funeral band. I'm really glad to be able to put this album on here because the moment that I heard it, it instantly became king of the funeral doom hill in my kingdom. My pick for Funeral Doom is Shape of Despair, Monotony Fields, a complete masterpiece of atmosphere, melancholy, doom, and beauty. One thing I love about this album is every track seems to be extremely strong by itself. Pick any song, and it's a total journey into the depths of grief and gloom. The fourth full length by Finnish Funeral Doom outfit, Shape of Despair, have completely nailed their formula of long tracks filled with sorrow, slow doom, and gorgeous atmospheric textures. This album marks their experiments with clean vocals in addition to their harshes, and make no mistake, there's absolutely no positivity on this album. Not on here. This album swallows you whole, but the moments of sadness and haunting beauty put this album in my top spot for best funeral doom. Monotony Fields is not a short listen at over 75 minutes in length, but damn, this album is the perfect soundtrack to gloomy introspective bliss. Melodic Doom Death is next on our pick here, and this was an easy pick for me. I am tossing in the entire Rapture discography on this one. We've said it here quite a few times. The Finnish have a unique way of approaching melodic doom metal. It's as if the deep cold from winters that have spanned generations of people has just settled into their bones. It is dreadfully sorrowful and introspective. But the way that Rapture counterbalances this overwhelming self-contemplation is by moving the listener along with their driving grooves, enchanting melodies, and dynamic vocal style. This band is sorely missed. There are a handful of bands out there that are reading out of the Rapture playbook and carrying on their musical legacy. Definitely check out Counting Hours if you haven't already. Both guitarists are from Rapture. Their 2020 debut, The Will, is awesome and really picks up where this band left off. My pick for Melodic Doom Death is Draconian Arcane Rain Fell. 
I heard this album for the first time in 2005 and was immediately spellbound by its hauntingly beautiful compositions and emotionally devastating soundscapes. This album is one of the best pieces of art in doom metal history, and to be honest, this record is a landmark in metal history in general. The song Death Come Near Me Alone is easily one of the best doom metal songs ever written at over 15 minutes long. I actually covered the song, by the way, link in the description. And to this day, this song gets me choked up with how emotive and captivating this music can be. This album is heavy, rhythmic, and keyboard layered with many different vocal styles ranging from gorgeous female clean vocals to harsh guttural growls. Draconian are not afraid of repetition and know how to let that music sink in and do enough damage to keep you coming back for more. Next up, we have Death Doom. It's amazing. And my pick for that is Morning Beloveth, the sullen sulcus. This band floored me the first time I heard them. Morning Beloveth took the scene by storm with their 2001 debut, Dust, in the follow-up a year later, the sullen sulcus. This Irish band brings the storytelling that the Celts are so well known for and fuses it with painfully contemplative music. The music is utterly crushing with moments of droning open chords contrasted by harrowing melodies. And these guys are great riff writers too. The vocals go from full blast growling to a majestic clean chant that is akin to Patrick Walker of Warning in 40 Watt Sun fame. This is bleak stuff. There's little to no hope. It's incredibly morose, but it's not entirely one dimensional either. The music is engaging, for tracks that average in the range of 10 minutes long. They're episodic in narrative, typically focusing on solitude, the human condition, and despair. This is an album that I love, but I don't really spin that often because it's just, it's super, super depressing. These guys are still around. I love them, and hopefully we'll hear something from them soon, and hopefully it won't just drive me to tears when I listen to it. Although, part of me does hope that that happens, but... You know, it's death doom. It's what they do. My pick for Death Doom is My Dying Bride, Turn Loose the Swans, an absolutely essential Death Doom album and easily one of the heaviest albums ever written in the Doom genre. Yep, going there. Released in 1993, the band started to incorporate more gothic elements into their brand of Death Doom, and I still cannot get enough of this album today. This record is one of the biggest influences on my riff writing and how I come up with harmonies and even write vocal patterns. My favorite track off of Turn Loose the Swans is without a doubt The Crown of Sympathy. It's a 12 minute epic Death Doom track that is one of the most dark and emotionally capting atmospheric songs that I've ever heard on a Death Doom release. I remember the first time I heard this riff. I knew that I needed to find every single band that was experimenting with these sounds. I would argue that MDB, My Dying Bride for those who don't know, are still to this day out of the Peaceville 3, the band that I revisit the most and actually the best. Fight me on it. Do it. Gothic metal is what we have next. I talk about November quite in depth in a video I posted a few months back where I rank their discography. So I'm gonna be a total sloth right now and just pull a clip from that video so I don't have to say things twice. Enjoy. It's hopeful, it's encouraging, the musicianship is out of this world and I just can't say enough great things about it. The band took their upbeat, dreamy waltz sound and pushed it into practically supernatural levels of prog mastery. There's just so much going on in this album, but it's never too overwhelming or chaotic. I think on my fifth or so playthrough, I was able to really pinpoint sections in the bass lines or drum patterns that made me awestruck the first time hearing it. The whole record is really a masterclass in writing beautiful, dreamy songs with a technical flair. Yeah, what he just said. Listen to that guy. 
I know this isn't your traditional goth music with operatic vocals and church organs, but this band has remained really solid since the mid-90s and has put out genre-bending classics like November and Waltz. If you want to check it out for the first time, make sure to hit the Spotify links below where we've linked most of these bands, if not all of them, to a Spotify playlist. It's within all fear. My pick for Gothic Doom is Paradise Lost. Gothic, yeah, I'm really creative here. Arguably one of the most important releases in Peaceville history for the label. Gothic came out in 1991 and is a absolutely fantastic, yes, you guessed it, Gothic Doom metal album. Nick Holmes' death growls are monstrous on this record and his clean vocals are wonderfully creative in the context of the album. On the production side, Gothic is definitely on the raw end of the spectrum, but don't let that deter you from the amazing content compositions throughout this album. What makes this record stand out to me are the choir and orchestral elements that drag this album into the gothic territory that the album is appropriately named. The record is no doubt a pioneering masterpiece and marks Doom Metal's ability to experiment and push itself into truly innovative territory. The feel of the album itself is exactly what it tries to be. When I listen, I see nothing but castle walls glistening in the moonlight, gargoyles that look like they could come alive at any second, and betrayal lurking in the hidden chambers of an old king. Awesome record, check it out. And finally, we have Blackened Doom Metal. This album, this album right here for me was an absolute game changer. I had never heard anything quite like it. It is intense. It is melancholic, it is hopeful, it is self-aware, it is the deadwood tree, it is the sapling. This, my friends, is the Woods of Eep debut album, Pursuit of the Sun and the Allure of the Earth. It is a one-hour odyssey through the barren forests of Toronto where sharp sticks puncture your flesh as you are dragged across the forest floor by your wretched demons only to find hope in the power of the trees and finding trust in the seeds that you plant as you walk, or get dragged along, this earth. And for those of you who aren't aware, Glenn Fricker of SMG Media was the audio engineer on this record. Very cool. This is more than just a metal record to me. It is more akin to a story told by someone that had an incredibly empathetic view of human existence. David Gold sings of crippling despair as loudly as he sings of moving forward and making fires from the mistakes that you've made. This record makes me feel grounded. It reminds me as to why I love nature. And it feels like total nature worship. In the atmosphere, in the lyrics, the Woods discography is practically flawless, but this album holds a special place in my heart. I feel very privileged that this record was purchased from David Gold himself when they came to Worcester several years ago. This is a treasure in my collection, and Woods of Ypres, Woods 2, is just an incredible record. Rest in peace, David Gold. That's an awesome pick, Ben. So glad that that's on your list. For my pick for Blackened Doom is Dragged Into Sunlight, Hatred for Mankind. This band is enigmatic for me and I totally love that. Every piece of art that they put out is dark, magnetic, intense, and it looks like I should not be watching or listening to it. Even the album title of this record bothers me a little bit, but do not let that deter you from the sheer brilliance waiting for you inside this album. This record is a harrowing experience, like you're experiencing the ultimate cataclysm swept up in a whirlwind of debris that's full of demons looking to tear apart all of existence. The album feels like a relentless journey and getting through it unscathed is honestly a feat in itself. The production on this album is totally amazing and adds to the wonder that is this unholy piece of filthy blackened doom. The guitars are fuzzed out, almost chainsaw-like guitar tone with furious tremolo picking. They're not afraid to lean into the atmosphere of noise and feedback just to add to the intensity. The best part of this album though is without a doubt the drumming. Devastating brutal 
and dizzying in technical brilliance, an absolute must listen of blackened death metal. So friends, what are your favorite doom metal albums in these subgenres? Let us know in the comments below. Hit us up on our socials. We've been interacting with our community a ton. You guys are the best. That's right. Do not get stuck in the depths of sadness with this list. Round out the darkness with some sick video games or movies. That's what we do. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Go with the gods. We'll see you next time. Take care.